season-ending world championship in Michigan. So here we go, folks. 61st U.S. Open. Major title on the line. Two Hall of Famers go head-to-head. -head. You couldn't ask for a better scenario. It just seems like we've seen this a number of times. Brian Voss going up against Pete Weber. Great start. BV. Players of this caliber in a title match for a major championship take it to a whole nother level mentally. They get so focused that nothing else enters into the thought process except putting the ball in their hand and letting go of it at the foul line. Been quite a while since we started our broadcast at 9.30 local time. More than an hour and a half to wait for Pete Weber, and here he goes. But as we told Holly, it's time to get it on. Leading into the Baby Ruth real deal matchup. Pretty sweet matchup, but if you want to look at one thing, look at the strike percentage. And if it's going to come down to having to throw one to win this thing, Brian Voss has got the higher percentage. Although Pete has owned Brian on television. As we mentioned before, yeah, 10 pin help. Pete slaps his hand so hard he loses one of his rings. <laughs> you think Pete's fired up? Nice break here. Six goes to the sidewalk, cuts the 10 out. Weber gets on top of Voss early with a big double. Wears a couple bracelets too, the magnetic type to help ease the pain, fatigue in his hands, especially his wrist. Back to Brian Voss. Ooh. All down again for Brian Voss from Atlanta. Take your shirt off. Let's go out in the backyard and let's get the gloves on and let's just see who the last guy standing is because that's what you're going to have right now is a slugfest between Voss and Weber. Light zone carries it all even after two. The emotions run high here, folks. This is a big tournament from Brian Voss. We mentioned the first half of the year was grasping any idea he could muster to try to figure out what the problem was. But a few weeks ago, made the adjustment. Yeah, yeah. And all the adjustments are paying off now for Brian Voss, without question. This is what a U.S. Open is all about. Perfect through two and a half frames. Look at Brian Voss. Everything riding on this four weeks ago. He was 72nd on the point list. Amazing. Right now, one win away from his second major in $100,000. Likes the sunglasses to reduce oh. the glare. Pete Weber. Yeah. What a start for our bowlers. Six in a row, we're all even. Sir. Look what Pete Weber did to the other four guys, or the other three guys on the telecast. The only player he lost to, Brian Voss. Defeated Chris Barnes twice. You ask why he bowled Chris Barnes twice? He bowled him once in position round as well. He told us last night, on top of his game, feels as positive about his bowling now as he ever has in his career, which for someone of that status is a pretty amazing statement. Says he feels better than ever. It's his best year ever on the PGA Tour. Focus, determination. What's got him here to this come point? On, come on, yeah! Urges the ball to turn back to the pocket. Stays perfect. Front four for Weber. Turkey to start for Brian Voss. The first three. Everything perfect for all. Two kings of the lane certainly are on display. Center stage here in Southern California, all going for the U.S. Open trophy. $100,000, the exemption for three years, double points. There's so much to be won. The, the third of our four majors and things are interesting, folks. Two potential 300 games with plenty of bonus money available from Cambridge Credit Counseling should that happen. Huge crowd. Not a sound to be heard. Until the release, it's high. Almost had the big four. 
And this is not an easy shot at all. Four, six, seven. And again, the right lane jumps up and bites somebody. Brian Voss needed a strike there to keep this match all even. Please. Oh! And roll. Brian Voss, who last night sent the crowd a fountain bull, had the 7 10 against Walter A. Williams Jr. That was unbelievable to watch. We have great crowds in the final qualifying rounds. Position play. Oh, oh, 7 10. Oh, oh, oh. Can you believe it? Think I can get that? Oh, my God. What are the odds? Brian, um, the odds are monumentally against this happening. He did it last night, remember. Astronomical. He made this last night position round. There's only been three of these ever made on television. Mark Roth, John Mazza, Jess Dayrook. The only three to ever convert 7-10 on television. What do you think? Oh, no help there. Seven stays up for Brian Voss last night. In Fountain Valley against Walter A. Williams Jr. It's a 7-10. Randy did it. Got to get that ball to enter that pin at a 45-degree angle. Hope it pops out. It's exactly what Brian Voss did. He told me last night, he says, you know, Rand, as soon as I let go of it, I thought I had a really good chance of making it, sure enough. That he did. Now it's an opening. Remember, Pete's still perfect here. Looks for the front five. Got to hurry. It's high. Look out. A split for him, too. Unbelievable. 6-7-10. That wasn't very good. Watch the bottom of the swing here. We, we know that Pete likes to keep that hand nice and open at the bottom. Look at the fingers, how they're curled underneath. He grabbed it right at the bottom of the swing. That made the ball go high. Maybe an issue here as we look to try to convert that difficult shot. Kicking it across the lane, and the deck almost got the seven. A lot of thumb pain for Pete Weber. As he told us last night, his hand, after all the 50-plus games of bowling, hasn't been the big problem. It's the thumb that has really hurt him. Yeah, his thumb's really big and ugly with a lot of calluses on it. He says a lot of thumb pain, hard to hold on to it. Pete maybe going with an extra piece of tape. 